All right, in this video, we'll be looking at linear transformations from one vector space to another vector space. And so for the most part today, we're going to be thinking of our uh, domain vector space that we'll be starting from, are going to be some number of copies of the reals, and our range vector space that we're landing on, so our, um, our source and our image is going to be r to the n. So, in general, we say that a map from Rm to Rn is a linear transformation if it satisfies the following two properties. Um, first, we want our map to distribute over addition, um, and we want this to hold for all vectors inside our domain, and we'd also like our map to distribute over uh, multiplication by scalars inside our field. So in this case, our field is, is just all of our constants, where we're drawing them from is um, the reals, and we want this to work for every vector inside Rm. So this seems like a, a pretty vague notion, so let's look at a, an example. So we're going to start with a map from R2 over to R3, where I'll define this to be for some pair xy. I'll set this equal to, it's going to be a, a vector with three different components. I'll set this to maybe x plus y, negative y, and 3x. So this is going to be an example of a linear map, or a linear transformation. So let's test this out by seeing how this map acts on a pair of vectors. So I'm actually going to, so that we don't run into confusion between our x's, um, we're going to let our vectors be a pair AB plus a pair CD. So these are just two vectors in R2. Um, just looking at these as, again, summing these as vectors, we know that we sum component-wise, so the sum of our vectors is a plus c and b plus d. Applying our map, we see that we sum our first and our second coordinates to get a plus c plus b plus d. Uh, we take our negative of our second coordinate, so negative b minus d, and 3 times our first coordinate, so 3a plus 3c. So that would be how our linear map would act on um, the sum of these two vectors, um, where I take the sum first before applying my map. In the other direction, if I looked at my sum of my, my image of these two vectors separately, so these two are um, the sum of my first and my second coordinate, so this is a plus b. Um, negative of my second coordinate is negative b, and 3 times my first coordinate is 3a. Clean that up a little bit. Plus uh, the sum of my first and my second, negative of my second coordinate, and 3 times my first. Uh, taking that sum after applying my transformation, gives me a plus b plus c plus d, uh, negative b minus d, and 3a plus 3c. So modulo some slight rearrangement of our terms of addition here. You can see that these are the same, so our first property held for this example. All right, so far we've showed that our map satisfied this first property, but we have yet to show that our map satisfies the second property, namely that we can pull scalars out of our map. So for this, given some arbitrary vector, let's still stick with a, b, um, we want to consider multiplication by c for some scalar c inside our field. So for this, this is the same as t of ca and cb, which is the sum of our first coordinates undo that, so that's ca plus cb, um, the negative of our second coordinate, so minus cb, and 3ca, so 3 times our first. Um, in the other direction, um, if we'd begun with a c times t of our a, b, uh, this is just directly c times a plus b, 
minus b and 3a. So that's ca plus cb, negative cb, and 3ca. So our map satisfies this, um, this second property of linearity, and a map of this form must be linear. So this is a linear transformation. <clears throat> Identifying which maps from vector spaces to vector spaces are linear transformations and which are not is actually fairly direct. So given a vector um, written in this, uh, you know, written as some linear combination of our um, generators for each of our uh, coordinates, um, a linear transformation is going to send it to another vector. Um, this map, for this to be a linear transformation, our image of this should satisfy the coefficients of our first coordinate will be some linear combination of our original m coefficients. And by linear combination, I mean this will be some function like maybe 3a1 plus 2a2 minus 7 a.m. A linear combination just in the sense that we, we looked at before. So we would call this L, meaning a linear combination, and since this is in the first coordinate, I'll use L1. This is some Li of our scalars, a1 through am. So this is precisely the condition we need for a map to be a linear transformation. And since we're, we're mapping to um, a space with n coordinates. These are all um, linear functions from L1 to Ln, and you might notice there is no constant term. So there's no constant like plus some, some c to any of these. So that'll be important in just a little bit. Let's see how this actually um, how this would work. Um, here's another linear map, so we'll do a quick check that it satisfies this distributive property rather than the, the scalar multiple property to start. Um, you'll note that each of these is of the form some L of AB, so our, our map we could have written as A, uh, our vector we started out with is A times x1 plus B times x2, so our linear function of A and B is 1 times A plus 2 times b, which is this coordinate. Um, L2 of ab is 0 times a minus 1 times b. L3 of a and b is going to be uh, negative 1 times a plus 1 times b. And our fourth uh, linear uh, coordinate in this map is 3 times a plus 1 times b. So this satisfies our conditions of the previous slide for this to be a linear map. Um, just doing a quick examination, given any pair of vectors a, b, and uh, let's say c, d, we can see that this would satisfy um, fairly quickly um, by just noting this will become a plus 2b, negative b, b minus a, 3a plus b, plus uh, c plus 2d, negative d, d minus c, and 3c plus d. Um, this is a plus c plus 2d plus d, uh, negative b plus d, uh, b plus d minus a plus c, and 3a plus c plus b plus d, which is precisely our formula for t of a plus c and b plus d. So this is a, satisfies our distributive property. We could also check the second property fairly easily. I'm going to skip that for this video, but feel free to, to check this on your own. Um, an example of a map that isn't linear, so this is a map now from R2 to R2, so it should, it could possibly be a map from the coordinate plane into itself that's linear. 
it's going to fail to be linear actually for two reasons. One, we've got an a squared here, so this isn't a linear combination of our um, coordinates, and we have a constant term. So this could have failed for either of these two reasons. So we could actually just pick some coordinate, let's say t of, let's look at um, the vector 1, 0, plus 1, 0. So the way to prove that something's not a linear transformation is to just choose some vector v and w that don't satisfy it. In this case, I'll pick the same vector twice. And note that this sum, so this is t of 2, 0, which is 2 squared, or 4, and 2 plus 1 plus 1, oh, sorry, 2 plus, uh, 2 plus uh, 0 plus 1, so 3. If we looked at our sum of the image of t1, 0, each of those individually is 1 squared, and 1 plus 0 plus 1, which is 2, 4, so these are not equal. So one way that we could break it is just noting that this a squared up here doesn't satisfy our conditions. Alternately, um, because it has this plus 1, it's actually not going to satisfy our scalar multiple condition either. So if we had some scalar multiple times a, b, and actually let's pick Let's just pick a single vector. So we could actually pick our constant. Let's make it 2. And let's do that 1, 0 again. And note that we're going to lose our second coordinate because of that linearity condition. So this is going to be equal to um, t of 2, 0, which we computed on the previous slide. I found out that was, I believe, 4, 3. In the other direction, I mean, this is still uh, 2 times uh, 1, 0. Is 2 times uh, 1 plus 0 plus 1, so 2 times uh, 1, 2. Our second coordinate, more transparently, fails to be equal because of that plus 1. So in both of these two cases, both our first coordinate fails to be equal because of the a squared appearing there. So this is due to that a squared term. This term fails to be equal because of the plus 1. And so let's look at how we can actually identify fairly quickly whether or not something's a map, apart from that condition we mentioned earlier of each coordinate in our image. So we'll call this t of a, b. So the ith coordinate had to look something like a linear combination of all of our a, i, so a1, a2, a, m. So this was true for from 1 up to the n coordinates in our, our, uh, our image, <clears throat> we can see that this precisely satisfies our conditions for being a linear, uh, a linear map, as we did, saw on the previous slide. All right, we're going to be able to write this as a 4 by 2 matrix. So we'd actually like to start with four rows and uh, two columns. And we're going to multiply this, eventually we're going to write this as uh, our matrix T times this vector with two coordinates. So the way we're going to capture this is we would like, for plugging in A and B, we'd like to see A plus 2B output, minus B, B minus A, and 3A plus B. So our recipe for doing this is just going to be looking at each of our coordinates, so we have a 1 in front of our a and a 2 in front of our b. So that gives us our coordinates for our first coordinate and our second coordinate. Uh, we have a 0 for our a and a negative 1 for our b. We have a negative 1 for our a and a positive 1 for our b here. And a 3 for our a 
and a 1 for our b. So this is a good place for us to check um, that our function actually, that our matrix here actually satisfies our map above. So 1, 2, 0, negative 1, negative 1, 1, and 3, 1, all times our column vector AB is 1 times A plus 2 times B, so A plus 2B, uh, 0 times A minus 1 times B, uh, negative 1 times A plus 1 times B, uh, 3 times A plus 1 times B, and there we have it. This is our coordinates for our linear transformation above. Um, this isn't something unique. It turns out every linear transformation can be written as some matrix. So this is actually one of the alternate reasons that we use matrices frequently is studying the set of all linear transformations. So if we started with just the set of all n by m by n matrices with coefficients inside our ring, our field, our maps are linear if and only if they can be written as some matrix. So this is actually precisely um, why we introduced this idea of the linear forms that were functions of our coordinates of our vector. So our vectors, since they're in Rm, this would look like some, some b1 times a1 plus b2 um, times a2 up to bn, bm plus am. Um, there's one of these for every i, so we'll call this, since these are going to eventually be our, our rows, we'll say this is bi1, bi2, and bim. Given one of these linear, linear forms, the way we output our transformation matrix, which I'll call b here, although we used the, the term t earlier, is we make a matrix where our entries are precisely the coefficients of these linear maps that we looked at. So b21, b22, through b2m, up to bn1, bn2, through bnm. So this is an exact way to recognize when you have a linear transformation is you've got a linear transformation if and only if you can make a matrix out of it. So we've actually looked at linear transformations and ma matrices as maps from Rm to Rn. Our next big goal to move from here is actually visualizing such transformations T from a, a vector space Rn to itself. So this is going to be our real goal is what are the interesting self-transformations And we'll study properties of when this map t is one to one, when it's on to our space, and different ways of characterizing and decomposing such matrices. See you folks next time.